Okay. So welcome. Welcome to this neighboring jump start. That's the class you're supposed to be in. I don't have a room number or anything. We're here in Zoom. So <laughs> well, welcome to the class. And for our introductions right now, what I'd like you to do is tell us your name. Tell us um, your church. And then tell me about a neighbor you remember that was a great neighbor and what made them a great neighbor. So I'll start. I've got, um, I'm Ray Altman. I'm a United Methodist pastor. I'm appointed to the new wineskin initiative. So about half of my work is leading a neighborhood faith community. So I have right here in my neighborhood, we have a, a growing dinner church and we're trying to get a youth group started because we have a lot of youth in our community. Uh, I lead an online faith community right after we're done. I'll have a four o'clock Zoom church. Yes, that's still a thing. It, it's, I'm surprised too that it still exists. But And then I get to do stuff like this. I get to share what I learn about neighboring and doing church beyond the walls with church folks, people who are in churches. So that's what I do. I'm in San Antonio and a great neighbor. Um, I'm going to go with this neighbor I have named Rose. Rose Danielson is probably, I think she's 82, and she throws the biggest parties. Um, she is extremely hospitable. She enjoys it. She she loves gathering people. And so she's an amazing neighbor because I think she just loves people <laughs> and, and likes getting her neighbors together. So thanks be to God for Rose. Who's next? I guess, I guess I'll go next. Uh, I'm I'm Ted Robinson, uh, pastor at Alamo United Methodist here in San Antonio. Been appointed here. I've uh, been here about three years. Um, let's see. What was some of the other stuff, Ray? Uh, Just uh, tell me about a great neighbor. Ah, uh, a great neighbor. Well, I can remember a dear one, uh, uh, a neighbor. This is out in the. Uh, we lived in a rural area before we uh, we uh, uh, moved here to San Antonio, and this dear lady, she was she would if we needed anything, her name was uh, Oreo. Oreo Carey was her name, and she would always invite us to everything, anything. And she was uh, she was she was from India, and we got our first real taste of Indian food. And she did a lot of things in the Indian custom, and it was very nice. But the thing that impressed us most about her is her kindness to us. She was always, if we needed something, she was always there for us. And we tried to do the same uh, for her as well. That's Amen. awesome. Thanks be to Amen. God for Oreo. Amen. Right. Yes. I'm Tessie Robinson. I'm the uh, wife of Pastor Ted Robson here at Alamo United Methodist Church. And um, I we have a very good neighbor here, right here in San Antonio, about three doors down from us. She's, um, her name is Grace. And Grace and I visit when we can. But the good thing about Grace, we always check on each other. Uh, she, she always, when the weather was real bad during that ice storm and things, we checked on each other every night and then every other evening. And then when I had my uh, knee replaced, Grace would come up and bring me sandwiches and bring me food and stuff like that. She was a very good neighbor. And even to even now, even now, just the other day, we was checking on each other, calling, calling, talking to each other. She's a very good neighbor. And I'm trying to get her to this church. <laughs> sure. Thanks be to God for Grace. Amen. I'll go next. Um, I'm Kate Gideon. I currently pastor both Sinton and Odom First United Methodist Churches. Um, great neighbor, I would have to say, are my old neighbors from before I moved down here to Sinton, are Matt and Caroline Dunda. Um, the thing I love best about Caroline is every, she lived across the way from me, and every day she came over at 7 o'clock in the evening. And we would sit and visit for about 45 minutes. And she always brought my dog's treats. And Ooh. she's from England. So we always had something uh, interesting to talk about because her husband, Matt, was retired Air Force. So um, I love those two people with my whole soul. 
And every time I go back to New Braunfels, I make it a point to carve out at least a 30 minute visit and go back and visit my neighbors. Wow. Every day, 7 p.m.? Every day, 7 p.m., like clockwork. What's her name again? Matt Matt is her husband, and Caroline is the one who came to Thanks visit Thanks be to God for Matt and Caroline. Yes. Amen. I'm Sandra Boykins, and I'm not on camera yet. But I'm not a good neighbor. I've lived in the same address for the last 20 years. And I'm just now coming to know the names of a couple of my neighbors. They're great people. And maybe the reason I don't know them is because they keep to themselves as I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm much better just out in the community doing whatever I can do. Well, thanks for sharing. You're, you're actually kind of the, that's the average American is we kind of stay to ourselves and we know we know we have good neighbors we just don't know them very well so you're not a bad neighbor you might be average neighbor well i'm working on being a better neighbor there you go you're here <laughs> amen anybody else there ted with you or do we move over to jalen no that's it for us here for all right jalen introduce yourself and tell us about a good neighbor um my name is Jalen Gonzalez. I have my wife Charlie here. Hello. Um, uh, we go there to uh to uh Odom First United Methodist Church. We um we actually just recently started attending. I think maybe in April, April? March, March or April. Um, and uh, it was our first time at a Methodist church, and we really like it. Um, as far as a good neighbor goes, we lived um uh, we lived in uh a town called Edroy and it's a really small community. There's probably maybe a hundred people in the entire community um, alone. And uh, we had our next door neighbors were the type of people that were there for you, no matter what you needed. So um, always said hi to our kids. They always came by and said hi to us. Um, and, you know, just a, an older, really sweet couple that, uh, that, you know, that we enjoyed conversating or conversing with every once in a while. So um, we liked them a lot. Thanks be to God for those good neighbors who care and who care about our kids and our dogs and us. Hmm. Thanks be to God. Amen. Was that everybody? It's on at least right now. Great. So thank y'all for doing that and welcome again uh, I hope as you heard those stories of neighbors, you're reminded of the truth that God's grace comes to us through our neighbors. Mm. Um, that a lot of times God loves on us and works in us uh, through our neighbors. And uh, neighboring is such a great thing for so many reasons, but one of them is because it's not just about giving, it's about receiving. It's not just about receiving, it's about giving, it's about mutuality and caring for one another, loving one another. So, um, Amen. you have joined in now on a, this is just going to be five weeks and the goal, I want to be very clear is that you get something started in these five weeks that you're able to carry on. So you've heard the word jump start, And as you know, with a jump start, that, you know, you don't keep putting the those little wires on your, your battery on your car, they don't stay there. They just get the car started. And that's what we're trying to do with these five weeks. We're trying to get neighboring started um, or to take it further or to take it deeper. So you might be doing some neighboring, but want to do a little bit more. And um, we're going to talk about what that is. Today, we're going to focus on why. Why are we neighboring? Why is it important to God? Why is it important to the church? And so I'll talk for a little bit, but we're going to have plenty of time to do some conversation. So um, I'll ask you to make sure you're participating here in a minute. Let me share my screen. And let me make sure you can see the presentation. Can I get a thumbs up when this shows up? Can you see the big screen that says, why neighbor? All right. We can see it. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. So we got to do this already. We told about our great neighbor and what made them a great neighbor. Um, I want to make sure, again, you know what the goal of this is. This, these next five weeks, 
is that we want your church to have a neighboring team. So it can be at least three people. And that's what y'all have right now. Both of these groups right now have three people, these two churches, and that can be the beginning of your team because those you're going to hold each other accountable. And God has set you apart to pay attention to neighboring. And I would encourage that team, consider yourself an ongoing team and a team that can grow. Um, So if you don't have a team, most likely your church won't have somebody to lead in neighboring. Um, So that's the number one goal, build a neighboring team. The number two goal is to just get started some rhythms for neighboring. So y'all are church people, so you know what rhythms are. What happens on Sunday mornings? What's the rhythm? Worship. Worship. We've Mm -hmm. been doing that for hundreds of years. It's a rhythm. Yeah. A lot of churches have something on Wednesday night for their rhythm. A lot Mm -hmm. of churches have um, a rhythm for a Christmas Eve service. A lot of churches have a a vacation Bible school on their calendar. These are things we just kind of put into the rhythm of our lives. We, We get used to them being there. They, Mm -hmm. they get built in. So you may not have a lot of rhythms for neighboring. And in these five weeks, we want to get those started and we want to get them started so that they can take hold. We want them to get stuck at your church and then hopefully they will become a part of your DNA as a congregation. Mm -hmm. And then maybe the most obvious one of these goals, you are going to meet new people. (laughs) You're going to meet your neighbors. You're going to right. you're actually going to meet them, talk to them, get to know them. And like any relationship, you don't become best friends and you don't even really learn to trust each other in five weeks. I mean, some of y'all have those romantic stories, you know, fell in love in five weeks. Well, this that that's that's the exception to the rule. Most of us, it takes a while. And so you're just getting to know in five weeks, your neighbors, you might get some names, you might get to know some stories, right? It's the beginning of a journey. And Mm -hmm. the truth is, I'd like you to get to know as many neighbors as you can in these five weeks, because that is going to be, this is actually, you know how electricity goes into your battery when you jumpstart a car, that's the electricity is when you meet people that, that God wants you to meet and wants you to be connected to. It's self-generating. It gives you energy. It gives them energy. And suddenly something begins that has the power to continue. That's what I believe, Mm -hmm. that if you actually meet neighbors and don't just talk about it, um, it'll give you some life and some new stuff will begin to happen. Okay. Next slide, if I can move forward here. A couple stories. This one, I got a story. This one's from San Antonio Church that is in um, a lower income neighborhood in San Antonio that a pastor was telling me they have a a neighbor, I think two doors down from the church. And that church has done so much in that neighborhood. Um, They they are a church that has been neighboring for several years. And so people come and eat at the church. People know that there are programs for like feeding ministry and stuff for kids at the church. And there's one lady named Maria two doors down from the church who has become the unofficial groundskeeper of the church property. She Mm. keeps the lawn. She keeps the flowers. She has the number for the board of trustees who don't live near the church. So if there's ever something wrong, she knows who to call. She's not a member of the church. Oh, that's interesting. She does all of this because the church is her neighbor. And just like you talked about neighbors being good neighbors, she's a good neighbor. Her church is her neighbor. And so she is very happy to be a good neighbor to the church. That's an example of neighboring. Another one I think of is in Austin. This is a church that um, almost no one in the neighborhood goes to the church. Most of the people at the church drive in from different places, different neighborhoods to the church. Well, the church has been welcoming people onto their property, allowing them to use. They had a blacktop with a basketball goal. Mm. It started falling into disrepair. And some of the neighbors asked the pastor if they could do a fundraiser on the property of the church to raise money to repair the blacktop and put up a new basketball goal. 
And then the pastor had to go to the church and get permission from the church people for the neighbors to raise money for a capital improvement on the church property. <laughs> wow. And the church and the church folks were like, well, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so they did. They they the neighbors raised money. They did a concert. They had musicians in the neighborhood yeah. and they came out and did stuff and had a big yeah. party, raised money, and they were able to to fix the basketball goal so that the, the kids in the neighborhood could continue to play on the church property. That's another example of why neighboring in our church. And you notice both of those ended up benefiting the church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and then a story I can tell, I'm, I'm in my neighborhood. And after getting to know my neighbors for about a year, we started doing some potlucks over at our house with families, just socially, just a social potluck. There was no, you know, nothing religious, nothing spiritual or involved. It was just, let's get, mm -hmm. let's be together. But then, you know, after a year, you know, they knew that I was a Christian and a pastor. And I started hearing stories about how some of these families were not involved in a church and, but that they were, they wanted to be followers of Jesus. And so over time, I finally said, do y'all want to just take some of these potlucks and turn it into like a dinner church? We could get together, yeah. still have dinner. But we could we could start praying together. We could start looking at scripture together. And they said, I guess we could do that. Later on, they said, we were a little worried, scared. We we're like, what are you talking about? Um, but now they love it and it's their church. And these mm -hmm. are neighbors who, so a new faith community was born out of doing some long-term neighboring. Those are just some examples mm -hmm. of what can happen. Right. All right. So let's make sure I'm right now. I'm very, very clearly trying to persuade and convince you that neighboring is not just a uh, an option, that it's not just a method for outreach or evangelism or community development. Neighboring is it's a mandate. It's a commandment. So when Jesus says, uh, love your neighbor, he certainly <clears throat> He certainly means people who aren't nearby. So we know that neighbor means far and wide. So our neighbor right. could be very on a different part of the globe. They could be very, very different from us. But it most certainly does include your physical neighbor. There's really no way you can read the Greek <laughs> and think, oh, no, this isn't referring to, to proximity. <laughs> it, it's also referring to your actual physical neighbors mm -hmm. um you may know this but our communities are in crisis yeah um, so there are all kinds of crises we could talk about one of them is we are facing an epidemic of loneliness and isolation that's right this has now become scientifically one of the most important uh health crises of our country uh, both particularly the oldest and the youngest mm -hmm. um, are isolated without face-to-face -face relationships. And these are folks in our neighborhoods. They are right where we are. This is not just um, certain neighborhoods. It really is across the board. This crisis exists. And just so you know, um, being isolated and alone has serious physical health um, effects and that um, sometimes being isolated and alone if it's if it's severe if you're not having the social connection that God created us to have it could it can be like eating unhealthy not exercising yep. smoking a pack a day it's that mm -hmm. bad on the on your life expectancy and so now people are really starting to pay attention to this and here we have churches that have been strategically placed around the country in neighborhoods, all around rural neighborhoods, urban neighborhoods, and they're sitting there with the opportunity to reach our neighbors in relationship. Um, studies also show when they survey people, people actually do want to know their neighbors. And we're this is interesting. You know, when you ask somebody anonymously, they say, yeah, I think I should know my neighbors. But most people don't actually know their neighbors. <laughs> And so there's this desire, yeah. and the reason this is good news for, for us is that we can count on most people, I'm talking like over 70 to 80 percent, 
they, in their minds, think it's good to know your neighbors. So if you were to go to a door, if you were to reach out, you're not doing something people don't want you to do. Now, they may not like when the doorbell rings. They may not like when a, a stranger is standing there. Those are true, too. But deep down, people want to know their neighbors. And then the other thing, we're the cross, this last part about trust, on a local level, so people might not trust organized religion in a big sense, right? Yeah. But but if you ask them, do you trust that church on the corner? Oh. Most, most people do. They still That's think it. they're here for good. And so even though the church's PR department has a lot of work to do and church is not what it used to be in terms of people's mindset, locally on the ground in most communities, people are thinking, I know that they're there to do good. And so generally there's going to be trust um, for our neighbors. Mm -hmm. So all of this adds up. We have churches have to be neighboring. And yeah. I, think, I think we all know <laughs> that when a church is in a neighborhood and doesn't know their neighbors, we intuitively know that that's not right. Yeah. I think everybody's kind of like, that's, that doesn't make sense. Because <laughs> Jesus said, know your neighbors. And we know that. Right. And so that's part of why you're here. Cause you, you know that too. And you want to help, help make sure that's something you can grow in. Okay. Let's take a minute to talk and um, we'll just stay with our group here. Let's talk about what you feel like your church has done well when it comes to your neighbors and, and what your church could do to improve on when it comes to your neighbors. Anybody okay. can answer. Okay. Anybody can answer. Uh, well, I, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go first. I think our, our our church has done a a, a decent job of, of of presenting our church to the uh, uh, community. We've had a, a few uh, uh, events, uh, some health fairs, and some other things that we were able to introduce uh, the church to the community. And we have a a a, a motto here that we want to be a bridge. Our church, we want us to be a bridge in the community to help them from where they are to Christ. So I know we can do better. Uh, I, uh, uh, I think what, what I'd like to see is more, how do I say this, 101. Yeah. I want to really get down, you know, with the, not necessarily running, you know, knocking somebody's door down, but I want to get to meet them 101 and, right. and talk with them and have a, you know, a real, real life conversation, if you will, you know, and, 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 and do that. And that's kind of like why we're here. We want to be able to get into this neighborhood and, and Kirby here. And we want to, 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 uh, uh, we want to get to know them right. better than, than, you know, a health fair or something like that. We want to really get to know them. And I, and more important, we want them to know us so they can know about Jesus. And that's, that's what we're that's what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah. Thanks, Ted. Mm -hmm. I'd like to piggyback off of what Ted just said. Um, again, I'm new to both of those churches. Um, I have not seen a whole lot of neighbor in happening. Um, the older generations of our church, they've all known each other since the dawn of time. Um we have just a few members that are in the younger generations, I would say probably in their thirties to forties. Um, and those are the people that I would love to get out and neighbor with. Those are where the families are at. Those are where activities are going to be. Um, but I'm not seeing any of that, but of course being split between the two churches, I'm having a hard time doing that for both of them, getting out in the neighborhood and being a part of that. For sure. Thank you. Yes, I guess I could I could piggyback off of uh, off of Pastor Kate, um, and we haven't been there very long either. Obviously, since you know April, as I'd mentioned uh, uh, previous, but um, I definitely agree. Um, there is a huge gap uh, between, uh, and and specifically in Odom, I can't speak for the Sinton Church because I've I've never attended that one. But there's a huge gap between. Um, the older generation and 
the younger generation. You know, uh, my wife and I are both in our thirties um, and there's essentially no one younger than us attending church other than, you know, our kids and, and maybe, you know, a couple of other kids. But I think realistically for, for what I see coming from a, a congregation or from, from a member of the congregation congregation perspective is um, a sense of rele relevancy, um, you know, being stuck in in a traditional way of of uh, of doing things sometimes can uh, deter people in my generation from going to church. And I grew up Catholic, so I'm used to the you know rhythm of of a Catholic church, which you know is kind of what I'm what I'm getting from you know from Methodism, which I like because I didn't like the structure of the Catholic Church and a lot of the political political views and and things like that, but. Um, in the same sense, I, I think um, being able to connect with people um, in in my generation and and younger, and also being relevant to today is is something that's huge, and that that I would like to kind of see happen in in our neighborhood at least for for our church, um, and then just reigniting some of the passion in in some of some of the older generation. You know, I feel like we get so so stuck in our ways of just doing the same thing over and over again that um, we kind of lose that passion and it just almost becomes a um, it almost becomes a sorry that's my daughter um, it almost becomes just routine and and you just get into uh, just doing it because it's something that you are told to do every Sunday. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, these are these are great responses, and I think what what everyone is saying is stuff that I know I've heard and experienced myself. I think it's very common. I want to normalize what you're saying. I, I actually think, mm -hmm. I think the last twenty years or so, you know, churches started coming awake to this realization that people aren't just going to come to our church because it sits there. Um, and then, so then we started doing kind of what Ted. Pastor Ted said, where we let's, well, let's do something on our property that is open to our neighbors. Mm -hmm. And maybe some people come through that, but then even that doesn't automatically mean people start coming. Right. Um, and I want to be clear. And I think everybody understands this. Um, this is actually asking you to be a good neighbor as church folks to your neighborhood as the end in itself. If you noticed our goals was a neighboring team, neighboring rhythms, and knowing neighbors. And a goal is that's not on the, the part of this is getting your neighbors to come to your church. <laughs> that if God wants that to happen, and if people are ser searching for what your church is offering in terms of ministries, um, they will, they will come. And um, it'll be natural. And it'll, it'll be right. because of trust. And mm -hmm. so I, I do pray that that, that that takes place. But oh, the foundation is, we're doing this because our Lord commanded us to love our neighbors. And um, of course, they're going to know, oh, y'all are Jesus people <laughs> <They're> <laughs> over there at the church. Um, yep. But but we're going to we're going to show them through relationships, which is kind of what mm -hmm. many people said, like actually knowing and being relating to our neighbors. Good stuff. Thank you all very much for sharing mm -hmm. that. Any anything else before we keep going through the slides? Just a, a, a question. Uh, uh, Ray, you mentioned, you know, about, you know, you, you have these events on your property to get people coming. But and, and I think, as you said, you know, you could I mean, you could build the, the most beautiful church in, in around. But for some reason, nobody comes to your church. You put signs out in the yard. You put, you know, you got big signs and all this, but they just drive on by. So I don't see any way in, in, in of us surviving, if you will, if we don't neighbor. <laughs> oh, you're right. No, I mean, if right. we don't get out and say, hey, we're here, you know, you know, we got something here for you, you know. So Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And and we'll talk about this in the in next week and the week following. But um, this really changes our perspective when we begin to discover and maybe when I say discover, I mean, experience that God is in the neighborhood. Amen. Like God, God is on the streets in the neighborhood. God is in homes doing things. God is doing stuff between neighbors already. God's doing stuff that where there's pain and where there's need. And 
we as a church are invited to participate with that. And um, that, which is a little bit different than saying, hey, you come to us. It's saying, how can we come and join you? And we'll, we'll right. talk more about that. But mm -hmm. you're right. Um, we, we have, you know, for the 20th century, we tried to perfect the building, perfect the programs. <laughs> mm -hmm. We do it all right so that when people came, it, they really got the most out of it. And now we're realizing, well, what if we never th thought, well, what if they don't come and do take advantage come. of all of that? And now yeah. and God is reminding us, I have sent you. I have sent yes. you into the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, so let's keep talking about it here. Mm -hmm. All right. I think I have to push present again. Is that, sh let's see here. Is that showing up yet for y'all? Or is it black? Not yet. Black. What about now? Yes. Got it. Okay. So we talked about what we've done well. Okay. Something I want to talk about and make sure we address is that we are all different people. We are different personalities. We have different comfort zones. We have different gifts. Some of us are introverts. Some of us are extroverts. Some of us have no problem talking to strangers. Some of us have a lot of problems talking to strangers. And so I want to acknowledge that um, we all have our own neighboring style. And neighboring is going to be a challenge for all of us. So actually knowing people and meeting new people, I mean, maybe some people that's super easy, but it's not easy for everybody. So right. here's some different, let me just name some, this is not all of them, of the ways that we can make a connection. So these are ways to make a first time connection with a neighbor that are different styles. So there's the obvious direct knocking on a door. Now, that can go in so many different ways. You can be assumed to be a salesperson. People can assume that you're there to, in that moment, proselytize them, maybe like a, a missionary that's come to the door from another religion. Mm -hmm. um, I think it is completely uh, acceptable and faithful to introduce yourself as a neighbor and say, I am I am Pastor Ted or I am Jalen from the ch this church they're going to know where it is and what it is because remember there's all mm -hmm. the signs and the building is sitting there right and we we want to be better neighbors we want to meet our neighbors and so i've come to introduce myself mm -hmm. and i would love to get to know our neighborhood better and then that can end up being a conversation about um what do they love about this neighborhood what do they think this neighborhood needs but my point is it might seem a little strange because you need a purpose when you knock on a door, but right. it's not, it really isn't that strange to say we're from the church and we want to meet our neighbors. And so even if you don't live in the neighborhood, it's fair to say that's my church and we're trying to just know our neighbors. And you can even say, if you need to not here, you know, obviously you're always invited to things, but that is not why I'm here. I'm here to meet you. And um, start a relationship. So that's one way, the direct knock on a door. That's one thing you could be doing this week or next week if you've got those places. By the way, this includes businesses. This includes uh, commercial. You know, so some of you are near places that are not homes. And mm -hmm. so you can walk into a, um, uh, a business and do the same thing. We're from the church, wanted to introduce ourselves, wanted to know who you were. How long have you been here? You know, what do you all love about this neighborhood? How could we as a church be better neighbors? That's a good question to ask too. Okay. Some people don't like to be seen. <laughs> they don't. They, <laughs> that, that, the idea of what I just described made you uncomfortable. You were sitting there sweating while I talked about it. So you're more of the drop and dash type. And so you want to deliver a note or deliver a gift or an invitation that says, I'm so and so from the church. We're trying to get to know our neighbor. Same idea but wanted to drop off this note, wanted to drop off this gift. Um, you know, here's our contact information. Now the, the, the pro for drop and dash, you didn't have to have an awkward silence. You didn't have to meet a neighbor. You didn't have to risk a dangerous neighbor. <laughs> and you, you just, but the mm -hmm. con, obviously the con is that that connection may or may not happen. Right. And, it's less likely to happen. So if you can do drop and dash in a way that says we'll be back by, 
So let me suggest that drop and dash can actually be a soft beginning to direct. Mm -hmm. So you may want to say, we're going to go give out, say, we're going to be walking through next week and meeting neighbors, just so you know, that's who we are um, when we come by next week. Or you may have just said, oh, well, if I do that, they'll for sure be gone. So I'm not going to drop, I'm not going to let them know I'm coming. So it's however you want to do it. And it's yeah. not, this. none of this is tricking. It's just to say, we want you to know we're here. Another way that takes a little bit longer, but a lot of, I'm comfortable with this a lot of times, is the organic um, environment where you create a space where neighbors might be near each other. So I live on a street where people work out in their yards when it's not too terribly hot or cold. And so just saying, I'm gonna sit outside for an hour. And then when neighbors walk by, I am going to say hello and I'm going to introduce myself. That's organic. Does that make sense? You didn't knock mm -hmm. on a door. You just let it happen. The, the switch of that is I'm going to go on a walk. And if I walk and I walk by someone out in their working in their yard or walking their dog, I am going to say hi. So this still requires some direct interaction, but it's not knocking on doors. It's meeting people out on the sidewalk, on the street, on the curb. Does that make sense? So that yeah. the other way to do this, which some of you've tried, is if you have like a fall event or if you have a pumpkin patch or you have a summer thing or there is maybe you're close to downtown or there's some there's a farmer's market on the weekend or there's a, a, a concert series. Obviously, these don't happen every day, but when those moments go show up, we last time I did this cohort in the spring. Uh, one of the churches is right next to the t the the baseball fields. So they said, well, we're going to start going to the baseball games. And when we, we're going to come watch baseball and we're going to introduce ourselves when we meet people. Oh, yeah, we're from the church right over here. And we just want to support the baseball players and their families. So we just want to come watch the game. And they did that. And they met a lot of people in an organic way going to a baseball game in a public space. Is this making sense for organic? Uh, and, yeah. The other way is the kind of backdoor way. And this is where you talk to people, to, and I do this all the time. So I just this last week met with a neighbor and I asked at the end of our conversation, is there anybody else that wants to be connected in this neighborhood that you wouldn't mind connecting me to? Hmm. And, I, and I, I, I got like three names of people. They're like, oh, do you know so-and-so? And I said, I don't know who they are. And they said, well, here, um, I'll text them and I'll see if I can give them your number. Or they said, I know that they want your number. <laughs> Here's their number. Text them and tell them I, I said that you could reach out to them. And then I reach out and make a connection. Now, what's super important about all of these is that you are upfront about your motive. Right. Because what people are going to assume about church folks is that they want you to get to worship. They, yeah. want, you, they want you to get saved. They want you to get in, come to their program. Now, I would just say, even if your heart desires that, that you also focus on the, the goal of a relationship and say, wow. we are trying to get to know our neighbors because we believe that matters. And just because Jesus told us to, um, we believe that connecting people is a ministry. And so we just want to help connect this neighborhood. And then you've got to kind of leave the if they come to church or not, you leave that up to God and leave it up to the timing of when it feels like the relationship is in the right place. And you go, you know, you've been next to the church and we've gotten to know each other. I would, you should really come sometime. I think you'd really like it. And now they actually know you or they know some other people and it's more organic. Is is this making sense? Let me get off of my uh, screen. Mm -hmm. Can I get some okay. feedback on these different these different methods? Uh, I'm on the the uh, the the drop the drop drop now. Sandra's already started a program here at Alamo about the drop and dash, and we do that. She does the door hangers, right? Yes, yes, door hangers. I got to talk to Sandra just briefly. Oh, good. She okay, she mentioned and that. that. That's good. So that's that's that that's we're we're just starting out on that. Yeah. So they know and, and, they know of you now coming up coming to the door, and so right. there's a little bit you know, you've pressed a little bit closer to where they are and they know you're there. They know you're there. So now it is about that relationship. Okay. And I I, I think that would work, but I think if we combine that with the, uh, uh, the organic, 
the one where you create the environment. <clears throat> and that's what we're trying to do with building the bridges. We're trying to create that environment, as you say, for relationships. Right. And I think I'm, I'm hoping that combined with that, with, with the, the, the drop in, what is it called? Drop in drop dash. And dash. <laughs> yeah. You know, that we could, there'll be some positive, you know, results. from Sure. That. And, and there will. And I, yeah. I my experience is that's going to take longer than mm -hmm. doing more, having more of the direct. And one mm -hmm. thing I've noticed about churches that do stuff on their property. So if you have a closed closet, if you have a right. feeding program, if you have VBS, if you have um, a pumpkin patch, go down all the things churches do on their property. If you have a uh, uh, distribution for backpacks, whatever it might be, is that you have all these volunteers to do the program and no volunteers set aside just for relationships. Right. right. And what we train yeah. our people to do in the church is to get the thing done and we don't train them to actually relate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we've all seen these amazing church volunteers who we, you know, we'd often like to be more back in the background. And we're running the show, but really what we're saying is one of the most important jobs is who's going to meet people. It's kind of like when you are trying to put together a hospitality ministry for Sunday morning. Yeah. And that that's always a challenge. Like, who are the people who are going to say, welcome, right. my yeah. name's Gray. Right. It's nice to meet you. Where are you from? You've got to have those people that are mm -hmm. neighboring on your campus. Um, uh, but, but again, that's on your turf. And neighboring yeah. is also about entering other people's turf, being the guest, being the stranger mm -hmm. um, is something we're invited. Does that get to some of your question, Pastor? Yes. I, and let me just say, I don't want to hog up the screen, but I, I just want to share this uh, uh, with, with the group where we are here and, and where this church is located. Um, we have a very large, well, not a real large, but it's large enough to where it's visible, homeless population. And we have a our church is situated on five acres of land right now, somewhere around there. And we have a lot of people, well, not people that come and, you know, we don't have a fence around it. They, and they, you know, when it's raining, they sleep under the porch and they, you know, home stuff like that. And I used to think that that could be a problem and it probably, it could be, but I also, uh, someone pointed out to me that, that's an opportunity there sure. for ministry that you could actually, you know, I guess you could use the direct approach maybe with someone like that, or maybe you, you would, you would maybe do the, uh, um, I don't know what particular approach would you use for someone like that? Yeah. I mean, in some ways they're, the, they're, they put themselves in a position as a guest. Right. They might have, been, they might have been, you know, uh, impose <laughs> impose themselves as a guest. They're really trying to protect their own livelihood, most likely trying to be safe. And a yeah. church, a church again, is a trusted place. They feel safer yes. there than than elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I think again, a lot of it is designating it as legitimate ministry. So to okay. say, it is ministry, either whether you're a pastor or a volunteer and a lay person at a church, to say, this is important ministry for me to connect to someone here. Yes. Right? And, and not not to the end that that I get them out of the way or get them to come to a program people need relationship and everything else will come will come from that right but I but I, I do think the direct approach or creating some kind of gift or saying we're gonna start we notice that people are tend to be here on Friday nights starting around seven so we're gonna start doing something then we're gonna we're mm, gonna have, okay. we're gonna have popsicles. Oh. That's a good idea. Or we're gonna yeah. we're, we're gonna play um we're we're gonna bring out the cornhole and we're gonna, yeah. we're gonna and we're gonna invite the people. They're here already. God has already said when God wants to have this gathering on your property because He sent a bunch of people <laughs> that are hanging out on your property. So yeah. um, I want to say welcome, Linda. Hi. Hi. Linda, what what church are you coming from? From Kelsey Memorial in Corpus Christi, Texas. Welcome, welcome. Right. So this is the na this is the neighboring jump start, and we are talking about neighboring. Is that where you want to be? Yes, I just got off the Zoom for with Ash because I didn't get the link and I couldn't get in, and I didn't know where it was. <laughs> so well, welcome. I sent her an email and she responded. Thank you. <laughs> this is being recorded, so you can watch the first forty five minutes or so and catch up. Okay. She mentioned that. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Well, we're we're so glad to have you. Thank um. You. 
Okay, so any other quick questions about these different neighboring styles? Linda, we were just talking about how God made all of us different and we don't all neighbor in the same way when we try to get to know our neighbors. Not all of us are, you know, ready to go knock on doors first. Um, and so there are different ways to do that that you can go back and watch and learn about. Yes, other, I... other thoughts about that from anyone else? I do uh, think that the the face-to-face -face approach is the more uh, impactful uh, rather than the, what did you call it? Door dashing or whatever it was. Drop and dash, um, yeah. Yes, because I do feel like if we do the drop and dash, like you said, the, the odds of them actually wanting to to make that connection are probably very, very slim. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, I feel like the face to face is probably the the better option. Yeah. And I, I, I do I put it on here because I, I do think in a neighborhood setting. So like where you live, um, I have found that given a little Christmas gift. So I make Chex Mix. I make more. My Our house smells like Chex Mix for about two weeks. And um I make a bunch of Chex Mix and I go deliver those. That's a drop and dash. And oh. it makes it a lot easier for me uh, later to make an association. So I can say when I meet people and I do knock on a door, um, I can say, I'm the Chex Mix guy. You know? <laughs> and they may have thrown it away, yeah. but they know they remember there's somebody left Chex Mix there. And so it humanizes, it gives, a, it gives an ease. I, I always think it should be a part of direct connection. But yes. but again, I'm just acknowledging that for some folks, another thing I should mention, really important, um, never do anything you don't feel safe doing as an individual. And right. always, when you can, be a part of a pair or a team. I, yeah. I think pair is better because if you have more than two, that's overwhelming to your neighbor. Um, <laughs> but if it's a pair, then, then you've got safety in numbers. Um, and you've got two different personalities. There's a reason yeah. Jesus sent the disciples two by two. And so mm -hmm. um, if you can on your team say, two of us are going to go do this, we're going to go do it after church or whatever, and we're going to meet some people. So that's what we're going to be getting into next. Uh, yeah, we've got, we'll have time for more, more questions here, but we'll get back to the presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got our direct method, the drop and dash, the creating an environment. All of these belong together. This is not either or. I use all of these in my own neighborhood, and I encourage mm. churches to use all of these. They all work together, and the more of them that you're using, the more they feed each other. So you want to have people coming to your organic environment. So say you have something on your campus that you met at the door. Right. You want to be able to invite them to more than just worship that might be valuable to them. OK. Let's talk about some really important things. I think some of these I've mentioned and I started getting into. I got ahead of myself. Neighboring is countercultural. We can't move forward if we don't accept that we live in a culture where it's perceived as a little strange to go meet your neighbors. Okay. But we talk all the time as Christians about being countercultural with Jesus, right? About, and this is one of those places where we are invited to follow Christ and love our neighbor. And yeah. so when you feel, some of you might not feel this at all, but I would say about 90% of us feels a little hesitation about neighboring because we don't want to i could ask you for these but i hear them all the time we don't want to inconvenience others we don't want to make others feel awkward we don't want to risk being rejected ourselves you know we we, we don't want to put ourselves in a position where we um uh a relationship doesn't go the way we hoped it would or an interaction and so we have this list of reasons why not to neighbor and so we do have to overcome that. Yeah. And that's why this is an exercise. This is an experiment these next few weeks of just like if you were starting a diet, just like if you were starting an exercise routine, you're going to feel that lift of the weight that you're going to feel you're that muscle. Have you ever, have you ever done something and go, I didn't know I had a muscle there. 
Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that part could get injured. All the time. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that part could get injured, you know? <laughs> and so you, you God gave you the neighboring muscle, but you got to use it and you're going to feel it. Mm -hmm. So this is an exercise and you've got to stay safe, but embrace discomfort. And this, honestly, I'll be real upfront. This is the make it or break it for your church on neighboring. Are you willing to stay safe, but embrace discomfort and go meet some people and be, be the stranger, be the guest, be the neighbor that goes and meets some people. Okay. Um, I mentioned this earlier. This is about people first. This is about connecting with and loving your neighbors and knowing that that honors God in and of itself. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> loving your neighbor, meeting them, connecting to them, learning their story, having a relationship with your neighbor that honors God. It pleases Damn. God and it worships God for us to, mm -hmm. to be together in unity. And so we, we do this work and yes, you may have other goals involved about having your church grow, people being connected to Jesus through your church. Um, I see, like I told you, I've done neighboring work in my neighborhood for, took about 18 months before we started talking about Jesus. Uh, but it happened organically because that's what people wanted to talk about. Um, yeah. So it, it's patience. And mm. this last piece I think might be uh, also the most important. You are not there to fix your neighbor or to change your neighbor. Um, one of the great things about neighboring is neighbors come in all types, all beliefs, all persuasions. And so you're going to meet neighbors that don't agree with you on X, Y, or Z. And it's about the relationship. Again, be safe for yourself, but you're going to meet, you're going to meet people that are different than you. And that's a good thing. Um, yeah. Any questions about these? It's weird. It's exercise. People first, don't fix. Do any of those resonate with you? Or are there any of those you needed to hear? The exercise one, the one about staying safe, but em embrace discomfort. That's the one that affects me the most. You know, you know, yeah, I'm, 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 and and the Lord is helping me get over that. You know, I got, I'm, you know, I'm, even though I've been preaching for a while, sometimes I still have a little trouble. You know just out of the cold go up and try to you know talk to someone that's right but uh but uh uh um i'm learning i'm i'm, I'm getting better and the lord's uh dealing with me on that but I, I i think that's a very important one there because i i you you're gonna any i believe this anytime that you're gonna do something for the lord you're gonna be discomfort a little bit because you got something else working against you you know, if you know what I mean. Sure. So that that discomfort is going to be there, but yeah. we serve someone who can overcome that discomfort. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a it's a it's resistance. And like yeah. I said, with if you gave up sugar right now, <laughs> your body tomorrow would be resisting you not eating sugar, and it's going to say, mm -hmm. "Feed me, feed me mm -hmm. that sugar." And it's resistance to, to do something different. And it's good for you, but it's mm -hmm. hard. And this is the same thing. It's going to be, there's going to be times you go, that feels weird. And, and you've got to go, yes, I, I'm going to push past that. Um, and it helps so much to do it as a team. I, I exercise physically with a group of people. Because if I, I don't have a group of people, I'm not showing up. <laughs> so our church has like a, a food pantry monthly so I'm thinking going to a one of the neighbors we might see or friends or recipients from the food pantry that we've been seeing, but not in their neighborhood. They've been coming to the church, but so it's going to be opposite. Yeah. So you, we, we were kind of talking about some of that before you were on and it's good because we do things on our church campus. And I, my point was, we need to make sure somebody is focused on the relationships in that program and not just um, the program itself. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we have volunteers making sure everything's running smoothly from a, from a logistics point of view, but mm -hmm. we need to have just as many people saying, what's your name? What, you know, 
uh, I'd love to hear your story or just some people who are people, people, right. <laughs> and who are going to be able to meet you and get to know you better and, um, and actually neighbor and not just provide a service. Mm -hmm. So I want you could do you see the difference? Yes. Provide, mm -hmm. Providing a service is a, is very nice, but neighboring can happen while you provide a service. Yeah. Right. And, um, and yes, some of these folks might actually be physical neighbors to the church. They may not, they may be a couple blocks away. They may be mm -hmm. right around mm -hmm. the church. Anything else on this uh, this slide you all want to talk about? Um, one thing I did want to I did want to say, um, and it was kind of to um, to uh, Pastor Ted's point. You know, I've recently embarked on a new career journey, um, and previous to this, I've been in the automotive industry for you know fifteen, sixteen years since I was sixteen, really, and um, one thing that that we had to do a lot is we had to embrace discomfort um, in the fact that you have to get comfortable with people telling you no. You have to get comfortable <laughs> with people, you know, walking out on you or just leaving and not wanting to talk to you. Right. Here's the thing uh, to remember, in, in my opinion, when it comes to the uh, the embracing discomfort is that the worst that they're going to do uh, in the event that you're staying safe, obviously, the worst they're going to do is ask you to leave or say, no, I don't want to talk to you or no, I don't want to meet you. Right. Oh, um, and that's that's really it. Um, rejection is one of the biggest uh, fears. It's actually one of the like cardinal fears in, in the in the human mind. Um, you have to embrace that rejection. And once you start embracing rejection, you embrace discomfort and it makes it a little bit easier for you to be able to talk to people. Um, but you just, you know, it's just something you, you have to do. Amen. Some, mm -hmm. thank you so much, Jalen. That's just a great yeah. word. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. something that neighboring taught me. So I was in ministry for 11 years, full-time in local church and traditional church settings before I started doing more full-time neighboring. And it really wasn't until I started knocking on doors and having some people every once in a while, maybe one out of 10, maybe one out of 20 say, I don't want to talk. That I realized that God does that every day. <laughs> every day, God's knocking on doors and a lot of people say, I don't want to talk. Isn't that something? And That's I right. realized what I'm doing is Christ-like to go and be rejected um, or to have somebody say, I don't want to talk, um, is a spiritual exercise in a way to wow. go, you know what? And it reminded me, I don't want to close the door on, on Jesus because <laughs> I don't like the way that felt. Um, the other side of this is that I have so many stories of the neighborhood grouches who over time see that you're doing long work over time and that you're the real deal, that you really care that you're not there to try to just scratch your own back, but you really love people. And a couple years later, those people become the most sold out champions for the work you're doing. But they're, yeah. they're skeptical. They've been hurt by the church. They maybe are curmudgeons for a reason. And so give them their space. It's just not time. That fruit ain't right. And yeah. so you just go on, move on. Move on. But I have so many stories of the, the neighborhood grumpies becoming neighborhood champions after they test it out and realize oh these are actually good folk yeah could you speak a little bit more on that don't fix yeah i think if anyone else wants to chime in here i'm a fixer because i'm a i'm in my dad mode of life right now so oh, your shoes are untied i gotta tie your shoes you got stuff on your face you gotta wipe your face so i i just am fixing everybody all around me and um I have to suspend my need to fix people's problems or what I think is wrong. Mm. And I need to focus on the relationship. Okay. And so with your neighbors, um, I think it's just important. Sometimes it's some people have the perception of church that that church folks are here to fix me. Yeah. They think something's wrong with me and they came here to fix me. Now, it may be that God wants to help them heal or God wants to move in their lives, but we we suspend our desire to fix and we just try to relate to people. Does that 
Does anyone else want to piggyback on on that? If that makes sense to you. Well, um, the the biggest thing about that is, uh, well, at least for me, and and you know where it's relatable is that, um. So again, like you know, I mentioned previous, recently starting a new career in the police academy right now, and there's a guy there. Um, who uh, talks a lot about his religion. And um, we ended up having some really good conversations just together about, you know, different stuff within the academy. And, you know, when I started going through a hard time, I turned to him to ask him for prayer. I turned to him to ask him for, you know, what guidance he had or, you know, what he knew about, um, you know, certain things. And, and he ended up being able to give me information, um, that related to Christianity. And it, it's one of those things where he didn't try to fix my problem or he didn't try to fix me, but rather he was a good neighbor. I was able to turn around and ask him for, for advice and guidance, you know? So to where the way I think about it is, is just kind of like, the whole phrase, if you build it, they will come. It's kind of the same thing. Like if you just start building those relationships, if there is an issue, you're more than likely going to have someone reach out to you and say, Hey, you know, you know, can you help me with prayer? Or can you, you know, I'm asking you for guidance or whatever, because of you know, what they know about you. So. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. And this, and it's something we're all, we're all going to have, we're different. And so we're all going to have our different, and that's a good thing, motivations and our own personalities as we go and, and meet neighbors. And that's okay. And we, as a team, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to help each other out in the process. All right. What we're going to do now is get specific, folks. This is where the rubber meets the road. I would like you in the next couple minutes with your team or on your own um, to make three decisions. So you can write this on a piece of paper. Uh, if you would like using your phone for taking notes, whatever, but you're making three decisions. And I'd like you to, if you can have a backup plan for each of these this week. So in the next seven days before our next meeting, who, which neighbor do you commit to connect to this week? So you might, you might be thinking of a house that is near the church. You might be thinking of a house that's on your street where you live. Um, it could be a business that's nearby the church, but I would like you right now to say, this is who I'm going to try to connect to this week. And then underneath that, I would like you to say, how are you going to connect to them? Am I, am I going to knock on the door? Am I going to call if it's, maybe it's a business and you have the number. Am I going to drop off a gift or a note? How are you going to connect to that neighbor? Be as specific as you can. And finally, your last one is, when are you going to do this? Wednesday afternoon? Sunday after church? When are you going to do it? Now, as you do this, I realize this may change. All three of those may change. But we set a plan so that we have an intention. Okay. And maybe we do that plan exactly as we planned. Or maybe the Holy Spirit throws us a curveball and it changes but you need to have an intention for this week because this, this jump start doesn't work unless there's movement. So I'm going to give you two minutes to answer these. Your who, how, and when, and then we'll, we'll share. So just take two minutes to write down your answers. Who, how, and when. And are, are you going to take a partner? Are you going to do it with somebody else on your team? Those kind of things as well. Everybody understand?
All right. Who, how, and when? Okay. Well, we've 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 uh, we've got two choices. We've got on on the on the who uh, is uh, uh, Sandra has someone in her neighborhood that she's going to uh, uh, connect with. Uh, uh, it's, just, it's not an individual. It's that whole neighborhood, the tiny house neighborhood. The it's tiny house, oh, it's okay. a neighborhood. So she's going to go to a particular neighborhood, and that's the who, right? Yes, they are right down the street. From and what's what's the uh, what's the next question? How? Yeah, is it going to be? Are you just going to walk down and knock on a door, or or do you have a? Do they have like a um, community center, or what? How 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 are you going to meet people? No, once again, I'm going to uh, use the door hangers. In some cases, I will actually speak to people as I did the last time, because there were people uh, getting out of their cars. Mm -hmm. uh, people working in their garages with the door open, and I didn't just leave the door hanger and not explain who I was and why I was there. Gotcha. Uh, I specifically invited them to come and visit our church and see what it was like. Mm -hmm. uh, they, The particular gentleman that I spoke to did not have a church home, and he specifically said he and his wife would come by. I haven't seen them, but they still have time. Uh, another young lady that I met who has two small children and was just looking at a, an apartment to rent. And she was asking questions about the general neighborhood. I don't live in this neighborhood. So there were things that I couldn't tell her, but other things that I could share with her just about the neighborhood. I don't know whether she actually moved into that townhouse or not, but she still has the information as to who we are, where we are, and what we have to offer. Awesome. And has, uh, the last part of it, the win, I'm not sure about that yet. I have a son who is ill, so I'm going to need to work around his schedule and what his needs are. Okay. So you'll have a flexible, you'll see what you can do when, this week when it comes up. Exactly. Is there anything um, separate from the Robinsons in terms of what y'all are going to try? Yeah, it it is. Uh, uh, now on the who, uh, we're going to go. Uh, hopefully, the Lord's will visit with uh, a, a, a dear na a neighbor called Gracie. I think Tessie already mentioned we're going to visit with her, hopefully, and uh, we're just going to. How is we're just going to knock on the door and and just visit with her. And the win is is we're going to do it on we do it on Saturday because uh, Tessie works uh, Monday through Friday and she's off on the weekend. So gotcha. um, Saturday will be our best Saturday morning, and she's always out in her yard doing something. So yeah, that's awesome. the plan. Now, no, now the great. backup now the backup plan is, uh, uh, and I don't know how to say the who, because in the Kirby neighborhood. The only people I know in the neighborhood that are uh, 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 close to the church is the members, <laughs> and they don't count, right? He can't go to the members. <laughs> so, well, so, have, you, have you ever been in their house? As a matter of fact, I haven't. Some of them I have not. Some so, I have. So some I it changes your relationship if you're both a neighbor and oh, the members. It's, okay. I mean, so it's not out of bounds to me because it does, and I actually think the the physical act of walking from the church to their house or something, it, it it's amazing what it does. It kind of changes your body and says, you know what, this is part of my church. This is my ministry, is this area. Okay. Well, if that if that's the case, then the backup is there's a, a wonderful couple that goes to our church and I speak to them every Sunday, but that's about as far as it goes. I just speak and how you doing and you know they're out the door. I like to go visit with them and talk with them. Good. No, that's great because that, that that gives you a you actually already have a partner in the neighborhood. So you have yes. someone in oh. the neighborhood who who's a partner and is probably going to be open to being a good neighbor themselves. Uh, uh, so uh, the who this is the backup would be uh, I don't know if you want names or not. Do you care? Who, if you've who got if you've got the name, I don't need to hear it. Okay. Okay. 
uh, we, we got a name, John and Julie. They're their names. How? We're just going to make a visit, I guess. Is that is that the direct approach? Or that is. We're just going to go see them. And then when it will be, probably uh, a Saturday morning is the best time for us because uh, we normally work at, at, you know, we work as a team, as, a, as sure. you know. So uh, uh, it'll probably be Saturday because she works Monday through Friday. So okay. And if you, Saturday since they are, off. since they do attend the church, if you want to give them a call and just say, hey, I was going to come stop by, we're doing it. And even tell them, say it's for homework. Say we're doing a neighboring yeah. thing and, and you're one of the actual neighbors and we'd love to come yeah. uh, stop okay. by, and even if it's on the front porch. Okay. And I'll, 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 I'll say this, you know, uh, real quick. Uh, the other team, and we got two other team members that didn't show up today. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, what they want, but I'm going to share this with them. Uh, maybe we could all go out one day and help Sandra with, since she's going to a, a, you know, a larger area. You know, maybe we could all get together and uh, dare I say, canvas the 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 housing area with, you know, just just with with the uh, uh, use a direct approach and then the door hanger and just yeah. You know, uh, or, or the right, uh, what do you call the atmosphere? Send people out in their yard and talk to them, you know. And yep. Most of that will be done it, for for us will be on a Saturday because of, you know, I got working. you. Yep, yeah. I understand. Yeah. This week. yeah. This is for this week. But for this week, it'll be Gracie. We hope right. to go and, and make and start a relationship with her. That's awesome. Thank you very yeah. much. Who else that has a has a plan they'd like to share? Appreciate y'all sharing those plans. Those were very good. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Either way. <laughs> well, go ahead. Uh, we have, um, on our street, there's two houses and a Baptist church right across the street from the church. So, uh, I know one of the, uh, one of the two houses, uh, he'll participate and come to the uh, food pantry, but doesn't come every month. But, um, I was thinking we didn't see him this last month. So maybe that's one that we can go out and reach out uh, to him. And then the name, his neighbor, it's a rental house. So I'm not sure who's there, but um, I think, you know, the ones closest to our church might be the first ones uh, to go to and take uh, a gift and uh, also let them know that uh, our trunk or treat is going to be coming up in October. And that way they'll expect <laughs> A lot of cars, you know, hopefully that time. And as far as um, I don't live around our church, but I do work uh, around the church or uh, towards our downtown area. I work at the county courthouse, so uh, I have to pass our church to get there. So um, maybe one day after work and I can uh, uh, talk to some other church members to meet me and that way we can go over and take something there awesome that's so great and i love i love what you said about you have a very clear purpose you want to um let them know about trunk or treat that's coming up both to invite them but also to say hey we're gonna have a bunch of cars here that day so fyi and then was there there was another thing there was something before trunk or treat that you might invite them to uh the um uh, they come to food pantry one of them Right. has attended before yes yeah so just checking in on them and letting mm -hmm. them, letting them know. yeah because i think he didn't go this past week uh but um and long story uh one day he went up to me during food pantry and he said did you go to miller high school and i'm like yes and he's like i was in the band and i was like me too <laughs> oh my gosh i thought that was you and so you know we had not seen it him in a while and yeah then I started seeing him at the food pantry. So that's great. No, so you already have, you even have a more of a connection, something else yeah. that you can go with. Okay. Well, great. That's those, that's a great plan. Thank you for sharing. All mm -hmm. right, Jalen, I know you had something too. Um, well, pastor Kate had to get off a little bit early. I think she had prior engagement. So, um, we're going to, uh, we're going to make an executive decision, uh, and decide that, we're going to uh, we're going to take a page from your book and do the uh, the checks mix thing. I really liked that idea. But we're going to yeah. leave a note with it, um, and we're going to start with the neighbors that are around the church, um, and just kind of pick a street right there, 
Yep. Um, leave a note, let them know who we are, um, that we just want to meet everybody in the neighborhood. And then uh, also do the uh, the thing where we're going to set a time uh, that we're going to come back to actually introduce ourselves and say hi. Um, as far as time goes, uh, Pastor Kate does not know, but we're going to force her to come with us because <laughs> <laughs> she she i mean i'm sure she won't mind i'm sure she won't mind but she's going to come with us so it will be when her schedule allows <laughs> yeah and as uh, you go as you go you know pay attention see who if anybody else is out if, if you can go at a time when people might be out in their yards or or whatever mm -hmm. then maybe on the way yep. you'll be able to say hello and introduce yourself say what you're doing um mm -hmm. uh, as you go but i like that that's really good you know leave a gift we're trying to, and your, your purpose is clear. We are trying to get to know the neighbors around the church. Amen. Um, there you go. That, that's, that's what we want to do. That's what we're trying to do because, and, and you might even say, because, because we want to be better neighbors. Yeah. But I need um, you to send me your uh, Chex Mix recipe though. If it leaves a, if it's it leaves a, a, yeah, it's a, it's a too intense to be honest. It's uh but I can't, <laughs> I do. Hey, I'm just saying if it leads a good aroma for two weeks, like yeah. I'm, I'm not opposed <laughs> that, to that. It's going to bring, to me, it smells like Christmas because it's got that oh, Worcestershire yeah. sauce good. and yeah. all that. Oh, okay. we're talking about trash. That's what we call it. Girl. We call, yeah, we call it trash. Yeah. There's other stuff you can put in there. I do kind of a pure, like a bunch of different checks mix with cheese, cheese it's and, um, <laughs> Uh, shoestring potatoes, which I can never no, find the no. shoestring potato strings anywhere. Well, they only have them in the small packs now at Walmart. <laughs> I know, a little bit I know. Of cans. I've gone and looked for them. I have to get them off Amazon. To be yeah. continued. We can talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome job. Okay. So how would you leave the, the meeting? Do you offer to pray with them or, or you don't do, you know, you, wanna... you know, be yourself, be yourself. Right. Um, and so if that feels very natural to you to do, if that's something you do anyway in your everyday life, feel free to do that. Um, that's great. Um, I've had a few situations where that's happened, but it's only been when um, the moment really called for it. I think uh, most of the time it's just, I wanted to invite you to chunk or treat coming up and let you know it was happening since you're our neighbor. Um, wanted to say we missed you at the uh, at the last mm -hmm. um, pickup, and then wanted to follow up about who else do you know from our high school band? Do you keep in touch with any yeah. of those folks? Mm -hmm. And that's it. And you're done. And you're done. And mm -hmm. so I think part of neighboring, part of the key, is that if you feel like you had a good conversation and interaction with another human being that's your neighbor, you won. You won. It. You, it it's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not going to be the last. And it's mm. starting something that can can build trust. So you do not need to um, go super deep or spiritual in this conversation with a neighbor. You're just trying to make a connection. That's the goal. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And would you also, as you're meeting the neighbors, like I know uh, Mr. Robinson and... Um, Miss Sandra, they're going to go to neighborhoods. So is it good to um, make a list or how to keep notes on people or you're not really? Yeah. So I do that because I'm comfortable using my phone. I put the notes app um, on my phone and sure. um, I write down names because I'll forget their name. And so I, I write down their name and anything pertinent that I learned. And I'll even tell them sometimes I'm I'm writing down notes because I really want to remember my neighbors. Mm -hmm. And so I'm writing down your name so that they know that I'm not doing something else, you know. Um, or if you have a little notepad, say I'm writing down your name so I remember it. And um, thanks for thanks for this connection. Thanks for letting me stop by. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't I don't carry a clipboard. Because a clipboard mm -hmm. signals to people that you're like uh, a solicitor. You're, you're a political canvasser or something. Yeah. Um, you want to sell something, <laughs> right? But I yep. but I like to keep notes, and sometimes I remember it in my head, and then I go to the car, and then I write it down um, yeah. there. So, uh, but that's a really good question because if there's nothing worse than when I build up the courage to go meet a neighbor and yeah. then I forget their name. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great question. Okay. So let's zoom out. Here's the big picture. So big picture, we're talking now six months, a year of doing this kind of stuff at a pace that you can do, at a pace that your team can do. You're going to be meeting neighbors. 
And eventually, as you meet neighbors, you're also going to be taking note of the gifts and interests of your neighbors. So okay. as you have conversations, you're going to pay attention to what your neighbors want to see happen in the neighborhood. I have, we'll get in next week to some questions you can ask. This week, I just want you to make a connection. Just make a okay. connection. Just get to okay. know somebody, meet them. And then we have more questions you can ask to get deeper with neighbors uh, and, and other conversations. And then what would be really cool is if you could have a gathering with your neighbors. So either a gathering mm -hmm. on, on your church that's for your neighbors. So imagine having a neighborhood party oh, gosh. For just, awesome. for, just for neighbors mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. on your church campus. And it's just a neighborhood party. You can pray for the meal, but you're not having a worship service. You're just having a neighborhood party to gather your neighbors together. And unless they say we want to worship, then worship as long as you'd like. Um, but definitely that's a goal, too, is to have a gathering for your neighbors. So we're trying to connect. We're trying to figure out what gifts and interests our neighbors have so that we can respond to them. And then we're trying mm -hmm. to get together with them. That's our those yeah. are some of our long term goals. One more thing right. I want to do before we go. I would like to hear. Um, have you ever done this game? It's called the yeah, but yeah, but game. And that's where we have a hesitation or a fear that we're facing right now, um, a hang up. And so do you have any yeah, buts as you go into this week? Anything that you're hesitant about, that you're nervous about, anxious about, or that you would just go, I, I don't know if I'm going to have the time. I don't know. That kind of stuff. Let's just say it out loud. Mm hmm well, yeah, but what if they run me out of their yard? You know, what if what if they're mean to me? What what if what if they you know what if they're disrespectful and say I don't care anything about you, your church, or anything? You know, you know. In fact, I, we don't even want you in the neighborhood. Okay. What, what do you What do you do? I'm. That's a little, you know. That's a worst. That's one of those worst case scenarios. Worst case, right? but. That may very well happen. I mean, I don't know. I'm just okay. I'm anybody just before I say anything, anybody? What? what yeah. What, what about that? What do you do in that yeah. situation? Yeah. You kill them with kindness. Yeah. Literally, you, you just tell them, "Have a great day." I mean, that have a blessed day. That is the that is the simplest way Amen. to do it. I can't tell you how many people I've encountered that have said, "I don't even want to talk to you. You're a sleazy car salesman. Get out of my face." <laughs> Have a great day. You know, that's that's really what it is. Thank you. They're not going to murder you. I, I you know, they're not going to shoot you. I mean, I can't guarantee it, but hey, you know what? It's it's <laughs> it's not going it's it's not it's not going to happen. And okay. you're you're doing the Lord's work. He's going to protect you. So. Amen. Thank you. Well, and then for my my own mental health as a response to that because my feelings can get hurt. Um is we have a Lord who, Amen. Who, who heals our wounds and reminds us who we are. When people lie yes. to us about who we are, then we we come back to the the one who names us and the one who claims us. And we and and what I often do is I do remember, Lord, you face this every day. You have people yes. who say, I don't want to have anything to do with you. And you come back and say, I'm here. I love you. And I'm, be, I'm here when you're ready. And so um, that helps me uh, dust off my feet and go back again to the next village or next day. Okay. Any other yeah buts? Yeah, but maybe there's a dog or something yeah. <laughs> that you don't know about. Yeah. So keep your yeah, eyes I peeled. Do. Go mm -hmm. with a go with a, a friend. And and if you see a dog, make sure yeah. you have your way out of the gate if there's a dog. Amen. And um and and be ready to be ready to if you go to the door and there's a dog there, it might feel a little awkward. Just wait. Trust that somebody else has come to the door that's scarier than you, and mm -hmm. they they figured it out. So mm -hmm. um, just be patient. And again, if you want to go with a, a team member, um, right. I, I don't know if you have others, Linda, from your church that want to do this with you, but or just just drag them. Say, I need help. Come with me. Mm -hmm. um, My wife says to carry a lunch meat or hot dogs. <laughs> I don't know about that. That makes them chase me and, and run. I'll throw them away from you. They will chase after it, and then you run the opposite direction. Go. <laughs> oh, got you. So throw it. Yeah. There oh. you go. <laughs> Treat. <laughs> mm.
but if they get if if you get that negative response, I mean, I would still offer, but I made this or I brought this for you and just to receive it and then, you know, that you would leave. Yeah, and if it's a if it's the door hanger and they don't want it, then that's okay. It's kind of like, you know, being right. in a flyer and if they say no, say that's okay. That's okay. Right. Ha yeah, have a good day. Have a blessed day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It does it doesn't feel good, but we can rebound. We have that's the thing. As Christians, we have someone who can refill our cup. Not everybody has somebody refilling their cup. Right. But when our when our cup gets knocked over, we have someone who can fill it back. Right. All right. Well, we've gotten to our time. You know what your homework is. Um, I really think I can do this quickly here. Let's see. You will have an opportunity to, um, can y'all see this page here, this Transforming Communities Network? Mm -hmm. Everybody who's on this group is going to get emails inviting you to create a profile on this website and it, it allows us to communicate i'm also going to communicate by email so if you don't get this set up you're not going to miss anything mm -hmm. but this is a great way to stay in touch with each other through through the uh the part of this course we'll meet again next week uh the 15th 2 p.m and we will be sharing our stories the good the bad and the ugly we will be we will be sharing our stories about our neighboring adventures and you are free to fail. It's okay if things don't go the way you planned. Hey, man. God, God loves you. We love you. We're, we're doing this together, okay? So um, let me pray for us as we go. Lord God, we thank you so much for Jesus knocking on the door um, for each one of us each day to enter in and to um, love us and be friends with us and guide us. And we pray now that as we go into this week, you would send each one of us out Yes, simply Lord. to be a good neighbor, mm -hmm. um, to to love others as you have loved us, to um, go to meet a new person or to go a little deeper with somebody we're only an acquaintance with. Would you help us where we might be nervous or afraid? And yes. would you make the path straight so that um, doors would be open where they need to be open and we can be a part of your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven? In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Good luck and God bless everybody. God bless you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. All right. See you next week. Okay. All righty. Thank you.